Hello Xamarin developers, this is Xamarin guys so 19 tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be creating custom web view for our Xamarin forms project. So we will be implementing zoom in and zoom out for our web view. So in order to create this all type of project, let's start our project by going to file and then new and select project. Here you will see a lot of options, we will select cross platform as we are creating cross platform app. You can give any name to your project, I have given as zoom web view and then select any project as you like as shared as well as portable. In this tutorial, we will be discussing about custom renderers and how they are used inside our Android project. For the later part of our sessions, we will discuss about iOS also. Inside code behind of app.jml, we have already discussed about main page where main page is a placeholder which contains the page to be loaded. In short terms, it's an area where we are evaluating our app to start from the position. Here there are two parts for our main page, they are jml as well as .cs part. Inside code behind of our main page, we will be calling our web view as well as level that will be representing a loading option. Let's create a level that will be loaded when our web view is navigated as well as navigating. Let's create a new stack layout. Since we have already discussed about stack layout as well as implementation of views inside our stack layout. Now I will call my level loading, level loading as new level. This level will be called during time of web view navigation as well as navigating. I have to place some text inside my level. Along with that, I have to make it visible. And then I have to give vertical as well as horizontal option as center and expand. Center and expand. Okay. And horizontal option as layout option dot center and expand. Now let's call our web view object. Here I haven't created my web view, so let's go to our jaml part. Now let's create some control. Now I'll create an object that will be called inside my code behind as web view. I'll give source as google.com and it will be taking element from my web view. I'll close that, giving height as 600 and width as my 400 let's give a space over here now we'll be calling that web view inside our main page.xaml.cs part now let's call our web view object which contains source of google.com which when during time of navigation as well as navigated it will show some labels such as i am loading text navigating plus is equals to wave view navigating okay let's create a stack layout which have children as wave view i have to add wave view inside my stack layout and then again inside my stack layout i have to place a level loading level and then i have to at last place my content inside my stack layout now let's call our event handlers what happens when our web view get navigated as well as during time of navigation. In order to save my time, I'll drag and drop my source code. Here I have to change that view name. During the time of navigation, my label will be loaded as well as after getting navigated, my label will be disabled. In this tutorial, we'll be discussing about custom renderers. So starting with custom renderers, we should know that Custom renderers are rendering models for Xamarin forms. Here it has been divided into element as well as renderer. Here I'll be creating an element as my web view. At first element means it describes about visual elements such as text, color, font, text. In order to save my time, I'll drag and drop my source code over here. This will be my shared element part which will be called by both Android as well as iOS project custom renderers. Here my namespace is zoom web view. My web view class will inherit from web view so that it can take property from web view. The get zoom in label property accessor should return the value that's contained in the corresponding zoom in label bindable property field for the attached property. This can be achieved by calling get value. Whereas for our set zoom in label bindable property should set the value of the corresponding field for the attached property. This can be achieved by calling set value. You need to understand that the process for creating an attached property is create a bindable property instance with one of the create attached method overload and provide static get property name as well as set property name method as accessor for the attached property. 
where an attached property can be created by declaring public static read only property of type bindable property the bindable property should be set to the return value of one of the bindable property create attached method overload where attached method create is my case this creates an additional property named zoom level of type integer the property is owned by the my web view class the naming convention for attached property is that the attached property identifier must match the property name specified in the create method in above example attached property is zoom in level property a static property changed callback method can be registered with a bindable property by specifying the property change parameter for the bindable property dot create method. The specified callback method will be invoked when the value of the bindable property changes. Now let's create a custom web view renderer for our Android project. I'll create class and give it a name as my web view renderer. And then we have to add now select our web view renderer now I'll delete everything now let's drag and drop our source code in this tutorial you have to understand that renderer acts as a bridge where it takes control element and turn it something visual for the platform here we have different platforms such as Android as well as iOS in both platforms there are two classes named level renderer that is responsible for taking out control elements and turn it something visual for that particular platform and level renderer for ios is ui level whereas level renderer for android is text view my web view is the name of the placeholder class in your common pcl or shared form library whereas my web view renderer is the name of the actual platform specific implementation class in your android as well as ios project you are telling forms when you need to render my web view on platforms such as android as well as ios to use the class my web view renderer the call to the base class on element changed method initiates an android edit text control with a reference to the control being assigned to the renderer's control property the web view is then zoomed to its zoom level with built-in zoom control now let's build our project whether it gets compiled or not our build is getting started Build is ready. Let's open our visor. As I'm using physical device and reflecting using visor, let us check whether it gives me correct output or not. Okay, we got our correct output. See, I can zoom in as well as zoom out. I can use some cursor over here. Cursor down, cursor zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. Okay, we got our expected output. That's all for now. Stay tuned for next tutorial, guys. Thanks.